All right, gang, back with another video for you today. Several of you had messaged me to update my clean fragrances, simple fragrances, or easy to wear fragrances videos and for fragrances that are perfect for office settings and things like that. So I thought I'd put together a video of fragrances for you today, recommending what I think would be perfect for this kind of a situation. I've got some new fragrances here and some of the usual suspects as I've recommended in the past, but all easy to wear, simple fragrances, clean fragrances that I think are perfect for this situation. So if you're curious to learn about 13 clean, simple, easy to wear fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yeah, today we're talking about 13 clean, simple, fresh, easy to wear fragrances today. I've got a great list of fragrances here, some new, some old, and I think they're gonna be perfect for this kind of a situation. I would, also, I would also throw in the fact that these can also be worn to the gym if you guys do wear fragrances to the gym. I always wear fragrances to the gym. I kind of go at a time when there's not a lot of people if I think that they're gonna be overwhelmed with fragrances, but I also don't wear anything like really overwhelming. I do wear some simplistic fragrances, fresh fragrances, easy to wear, simple, clean, kind of fragrances and that's what these fragrances are so uh, do you guys wear fragrances to the gym let me know put a comment down I mean in the past I've done videos on gym fragrances some of you get really shocked that anybody would even consider wearing a scent to the gym but some of you would be like so happy that you have some uh, you know options to be able to wear to the gym so let me know put a comment down but let's go ahead and get started we're going to start off with a fragrance that I've recommended quite a bit on the channel. It's from an Italian house called Acca Kappa. This is Muschio Bianco, this one right here, White Musk. Um, really a delicious fragrance, although I, I shouldn't call this a delicious fragrance. It's a great recommendation. I think it's one of their best fragrances and one of the most simple, clean, easy to wear fragrances uh, out there. If you haven't discovered this one, you definitely must get your nose on it. I think it's really, really great to wear if you like the idea of something simple and clean and fresh and easy. This is definitely one for you to try. It features white musk with aldehydes, lavender, juniper berries, lemons, and cardamom. So it does have some citrusy touches in it also has some spices and aromatics, but for me, this is the combination of the aldehydes with the white musk. White musk is always clean, not really funky animalic, so it's a great kind of a musk situation or type of a fragrance you can wear that if you are into the idea of clean fragrances or simple fragrances. And then the aldehydes in here creates for a very uh, uplifting and fizzy, sparkling situation in a fragrance to give it, you know, lightness about it and not become heavy and dense. So a great option, Acca Kappa Muschio Bianco. Moving on to the House of Bon Parfumer. This is 003. This is a new one in the collection. I've spoken about it once on the channel, but I'm fairly new with the brand. I'm digging into them slowly, very slowly. But I discovered the brand um, once, probably like five, six years ago, at Bloomingdale's here in San Francisco. Not in the fragrance department, but they were, uh, had a big display in like the ladies department and I was walking through there and I saw all their fragrances in 30 ml format with the, this big display. I smelled some and then I left them and then they, the, the brand broke out really big. Uh, now the brand is selling here in San Francisco at Ministry of Scent and I'm highlighting 003. I don't think Ministry has the large bottles. I brought this one back from Italy. But this this is featuring notes of yuzu, bergamot, violet leaves, vetiver, musk, jasmine, and neroli. For me, this is a green citrus fragrance with woody, ambery touches. And I would say less amber, more musk here, and then of course some floral touches as well. The yuzu is zingy. It's uh, definitely got this kind of bitter, uh, you know, uh, zing to the fragrance. And of course the bergamot has a great floral, fresh, citrusy touch. And then the violet leaves, kind of green, kind of ozonic thrown in there, it kind of gives it a watery vibe. But but as I said, some floral touches, some vetiver with the woodiness, and of course musk comes in and creates for a great combo. This is Bon Parfumer 003. Are you a fan of that house? Do let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. All right, up next at number three, we're going to a brand new house I haven't spoken about on the channel. This is a Swedish brand called Scandinavisk, this one right here. And the fragrance I'm talking about is Capital, and it's one. And basically, it's about fur here, uh, kind of like a pine fur tree note. And 
that's basically what it is here for me. Very clean, very fresh, simplistic, but you definitely get the idea of this kind of like a fir forest or a pine forest in here. It's definitely there, so it has a bit of a Christmas tree vibe. Not a lot, but for me, there's definitely a frosty, clean touch about this one, a bit like snow-covered fir trees and things like that. So there's woods, maybe a bit of watery ozonic touches, light citruses in here, some light aromatics as well. So it's got this very, very soft fir note, which is really, really fantastic and really, really great to wear. Really a wonderful fragrance. I don't know much about the house, but I came across this fragrance and really like the idea of the fur stand out. But again, it's not a harsh fur note. It's not harsh and sharp. Very, very soft, almost like very gentle, snow-covered, kind of frosty, clean fir trees is what I get with this one. So this is Scandinavisk Capital One, uh, the third fragrance I'm talking about today. This is an unranked list, by the way, if I haven't mentioned it. Moving on to the house of Comme des Garcons, I think you can find a lot of great fragrances in this kind of a scenario. Clean, simple fragrances. This is Zero from the house of Comme des Garcons, which came out last year. Zero is a clean fragrance, woody as well, but musky and a bit kind of molecular in, in there as well. They've got those kind of notes in there. It is definitely very, very woody though, and a light rosiness under there, but very clean, a bit metallic and very, very woody. And it features notes of cedarwood, bergamot, musk, Haitian vetiver. There's synthetic rose and rose oxide and a varnish note in here as well. Very unique fragrance. I don't get much of the varnish myself. I get a lot of woods, definitely very, very woody, and that kind of a metallic rose, a bit of green stemmy rose touch under there. And it's got a very, very fresh surrounding to it. So it's got like citruses covered up and it kind of surrounds the woods and the rose and uh, whatever that varnish note is. Very clean fragrance, very fresh, simplistic, and uh, perfect to wear in this kind of a scenario of uh, if you're going to an office that requires very light scents, you have sensitive people, or if you're just into the idea of clean, simple fragrances. So CDG or Comme des Garçons Zero is uh, the fourth fragrance I'm talking about. And as I was mentioning earlier, I don't have a lot of, did I mention that already? Um, I trying to leave out a lot of the eccentric molecules fragrances with I, which I think are perfect for this kind of a scenario because I've got another video that I'm going to do that's going to uh, highlight those kind of fragrances. So that'll be in the next week or two weeks. But I am featuring a few of those kind of molecular fragrances and I'm talking about Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume or Not a Perfume Superdose. So Not a Perfume is very, very simplistic, very clean, all about Cetalox or Ambroxan in that fragrance. Some people can't even smell that fragrance but I feel like it's clean it's simple easy to wear but we're featuring I'm, I'm featuring the or recommending the super dose version as well this one you can actually smell it smells of amber woods musk a bit of light marine aquatic touch in there but it's just one ingredient just intensified it's the cetalox note but I find it to be very easy to wear this is a kind of fragrance I could totally wear at the gym and I don't think I'm gonna get um, and if any kind of any kind of like negative eyes looking at me because my scent is so strong it could come off a bit musky but it blends with your body and it kind of actually has a super sexy smell to it so this is not a perfume or not a perfume superdose from the house of Juliet has a gun so up next going to the house of Italie Libre Orange we're going to the fragrance you or someone like you this one right here very clean fragrance super simple fragrance I love it it's fresh it's perfect in the, in the heat and sometimes in the heat you want these kind of super simple and clean fragrances because the sweatiness the heat and uh, you know kind of exhaust you makes you a bit dirty kind of with all that sweat and everything so when you spritz this kind of stuff on, I feel like it kind of like, you know, subconsciously cleans you off. And that's exactly what this one does. And what I like about it is the mint of the grapefruit in here. And then there's a bit of rose and white musk in here, some green notes. So in the end, it's a green fragrance, a bit grassy, fresh and zingy, of course. And the mint is very aromatic and it smells really, really authentic in here. The kind of mint that doesn't smell like toothpaste and things like that. So the whole combination is really, really great and perfect as this kind of a scenario where you want something simple and clean to wear. So you are someone like you from the house of Etat Libre Orange. Perfect uh, fragrance uh, to wear uh, if you're looking for something clean and simple. Moving on to the house of uh, Byredo, we've got Blanche here, this one right here. Blanche is an aldehyde bomb. If you like uh, the idea of aldehydes, you will definitely enjoy this one, but it's a fresh one. It's not going into the direction of something like Chanel Number no. 5, which is also aldehydes. And aldehydes has 
has that kind of lift quality to the fragrances when they add them they give you that kind of fizz and sparkle and it's a very very light fragrance so it lifts a lot of the heavy uh, fragrance notes in the fragrance to give it a very uh, airy kind of a quality and simple kind of clean quality but it's lots of aldehydes here with musk peony woods sandalwood there's violet and orange flower yeah it's a bit floral there's definitely woods in here and of course the violet it's the key note for Byredo I think a lot of this DNA for Byredo fragrances is violet based I think and I think it's a combination of the actual flower and also the leaves which is very ozonic and kind of watery so you get the experience of both in here, at least I do. I don't know if you guys do as well. But Blanche is a great fragrance. Try that out if you're looking for something simple and clean to wear. Uh, moving on to the house of Cartusia. This is Essence of the Park. So another green fragrance, a floral fragrance, and also lightly woody and citrusy as well. And the essence of the park, it's basically you go to this park, you hang out. So there's all kinds of trees there, and they all have some kind of a fragrance on them. It's basically captured into a bottle, including the grass that you're like hanging out on or something, because the grass also has a smell. There's a smell about it, especially after it's been mowed. And that's kind of captured here. So it's green, it's fresh, it's floral, but not your like big bad floral fragrances like tuberose and gardenia and things like that these are more like tree flowers so their fragrance is not as uh, intense and it's basically beautifully captured here but it does feature linden blossom honeysuckle magnolia and artemisia so very green and fresh fragrance floral and lightly woody as well so this is essence of the park from the house of cartusia so a new fragrance i'm going to talk to you about for the first time i'm starting to dig into the estee lauder luxury collection this is the first one i bought tender light because I like the way it sounded and I'm really enjoying it as far as a couple of sprays I have experienced with this particular fragrance. So it's a tea fragrance, so it has this calming quality about it. So it's Chinese Tea Accord, it's Bergamot and Florentine Iris. And there's definitely the idea of musk in here as well. I definitely think there's like a clean white musk thrown in there. So it's a bit powdery and then of course very, very citrusy. And then of course that tea kind of calming quality. And I'm also gonna say that there's definitely like a musky note in here. Uh, and also a bit uh, aldehydic touches as well. So there's definitely very, very clean and fresh. Simplistic, they don't mention a lot of different notes and it kind of wears like that, but it smells really, really nice. It's a really, really cozy touch with this particular fragrance. Very simple and clean as well. So Tender Light from the house of Estee Lauder. Have you guys uh, discovered that particular collection? Uh, do let me know and if there are other ones I should check out because I'm curious. Moving on to the house of um, Olfactive Studio. This is Dancing Light, this one right here. So this is another clean, fresh fragrance a bit frosty a bit cold and the perfect kind of fragrance to use in a scenario where you're looking for some simple clean touch fragrances so it's icy mint siberian pine moroccan neroli and jasmine and i, I get that it's kind of like an ice frozen kind of mint note and it's definitely captured perfectly here everything kind of wears cold and these are the kind of fragrances i think that are perfect in the, uh, the heat of the summer that cold feeling in a fragrance you have that in a fragrance it'll cool you off when you're really really sweating out there in the heat of the sun in the summertime. A clean fragrance for sure and also simplistic but a little more complex than other fragrances. This is Dancing Light from the Olfactive Studio, uh, the house of Olfactive Studio. So this is another fragrance that I'm going to be featuring in uh, the molecular themed video that I'll be doing in the next couple of weeks that is going to feature a lot of the eccentric molecules fragrances but this is going to the house of Obvious Parfums. This is Un Bois, this one right here. Very simplistic, but also very woody and musky. Got a, got the molecular notes in here. And it smells super fantastic, really sexy off of someone because it's kind of the idea of that eccentric molecules, molecule one, but this is a little more oomphier and has more complex notes, but still kind of very simplistic with the wear and very, very clean. It has vetiver, ambroxan, cedar, papyrus, black pepper, gurgeon balsam, and bergamot for a really, really wonderful fragrance wearing experience. If you do like the idea of a woody molecular musky clean and simple fragrance try it although I'm saying it's simple and it does wear simple on me but it seems like there's a lot more notes credited to the fragrance but in the end uh, they're not overwhelming and they'll make for a really easy wear situation so Unbois from the house of uh, Obvious Parfums is a great, great fragrance. Moving on to a French house, uh, and this one I haven't spoken too much about on the channel, Le Eau Primordiales. This is Color Premier, this one right here. This one to me is also loads of... Um 
uh, aldehydes in the notes because it smells very, very aldehydic, but also very ozonic and also very musky. These are like key notes for simple, clean, fresh, easy to wear because as I was mentioning with the aldehydes, you've got that kind of lift and uh, kind of like airy quality with them, the fizzy sparkling situation. And here you got that perfectly here. It's very, very crisp also and simplistic with the ozonic notes. And then it does get a bit powdery as well. And then of course, I think there's also some citrus is thrown in there to give it a very a boost of freshness as well. I really love it. Really wonderful to wear. Again, you got to be into aldehydes. Uh, it might have that faint reminder of something like Chanel Number no. 5, but we're only talking about the aldehydes that's in there. there. The other fragrance has a lot more things going on with it. And here, when you remove that aldehydes note, you bring it here and you've got a couple of other notes that's uh, really uh, simplistic and easy to wear. So, Color Premiere from the house of Le O Primordiales. Uh, check that out if you don't know it. And the last fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is from the house of Ormond Jane. This is Gatsby 22. Uh, great house, by the way. Uh, I find their fragrances to be very elegant and uh, simplistic in a way that they're easy to wear. Sometimes overly complex fragrances that wear complex are not easy. And even though there's complex notes mentioned in fragrances and all of the fragrances in this video, including Gatsby 22, I find the fragrances of, or of Ormond Jane to be easier to wear, even their more complex fragrances. But Gatsby 22 features musk, vetiver, tonka beans, orange blossom, lemons, bergamot, pink pepper, violet, osmanthus, and leather. The leather doesn't get overwhelming. It's kind of like very, very at the end of the stage or the life of the fragrance. But to to me, I feel like it's inspired by some kind of a cocktail that uh, the great Gatsby used to drink. A bit citrusy, a bit sparkling, a bit, I wouldn't say boozy, but maybe something like junipery with the gin and things like that. Really wonderful fragrance, very clean, very simple, but you know, with complex notes and things like that. So Gatsby 22 from the house of Ormond Jane is the last fragrance for you. Uh, guys, are you a fan of this kind of uh, situation in fragrances? Light, simple, clean, easy to wear fragrances? I know a lot of you like really, really big, intense fragrances, but there's a, there's a, there's people out there that enjoy them light and easier to wear. Some people don't want the fragrances to take over uh, their whole, you know, personality. They want it to be subdued and uh, behind the scenes, but still smell great. You know, some these fragrances are perfect. I think very, very nice. If you have a recommendation for something similar but a different fragrance, do let me know what it is. Put a comment down so I can find out. But other than that, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye. All right, uh, the last fragrance, the bonus fragrance I'm gonna talk to you about is from a house called Blue Atlas and it's called Atlantis. So this is a fragrance that was sent to me along with a few other products. But the way this uh, whole situation with this particular fragrance happened was I actually had just gotten back from Europe back in October and I was looking for some deodorants for some odd reason online and I discovered this company with some recommendations for their deodorants. So they, they, uh, they actually, uh, you know, sent me a message while I actually was looking up their products, which was kind of a weird coincidence. And they contacted me about this fragrance. And so I said, too funny, I was just looking up your deodorant. So they sent me a deodorant and some shaving cream and stuff like that. So I've used those products. I really think the shaving cream is excellent and I do recommend it. Uh, but I was noticing, I was looking up more about their products and I kind of ran into a situation where every article that I found recommending this fragrance, and it was always recommended at number one, I noticed that it said it was uh, sponsored and sponsored. So I was wondering why the fragrance was being recommended at number one at so many different websites. So I don't know, I'll let you guys discuss that within yourselves or you know whatever, but I felt it was a little odd that I saw this particular fragrance, which is not even in the databases or nobody I've heard talk about was being put at all these like very uh, not well known articles or websites for the, uh, but I mean I, I think the, the websites were pretty legit so I just didn't understand how 
people actually tested this against the other fragrances they were wearing and ending up featuring it at number one. So that's the, the story with this particular fragrance. And the reason I'm doing this is because a lot of you were asking me to review it as well. Well, here it is, I'm talking about it. So the fragrance features notes of orris, oak moss, violet, ambrette, musk, lavender, clary sage, peach, apricots, bergamot, lemon, and black currant. So I'm featuring it here as a bonus because I feel like it's clean, it's simple, a bit overly complex, but I felt like when I was wearing it and testing it out, it wears pretty easy, and I think it'll be perfect for the office situation. For me though, I get a melon-like fruitiness in this rather than the peach, the apricot, and the black currants that are mentioned. And then it reminds me of um, an, a Creed fragrance, uh, Millicene Imperial, because of the kind of melon-like quality. So I didn't get the peachiness, I didn't get the apricotiness, and I didn't get the black currant. It didn't really stand out, but it did have that kind of melon quality that I see in Millicene Imperial or experience in Millicene Imperial that was here, which gives it a marine-ish kind of a vibe, you know? Because I read on their website that this is uh, kind of inspired by Bali uh, or somewhere in Bali. But for me, it's light, it wears light, it's easy to wear, uh, but it definitely reminds me of the Millicene Imperial from Creed. So I don't know, that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, it's not my style of fragrance. I would, I would be honest about that. I wouldn't recommend this particular fragrance, but I wanted to highlight it here for you guys if you wanted to check it out. But it was a little disappointing that I found so many articles, so many articles about this fragrance, and every single article recommended it at number one. How in the world would that be? But either way, this is Blue Atlas Atlantis. Uh, did I mention the name? But either way, that's the bonus option for you guys. What are your thoughts on that fragrance? Let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.